Ms. Delia Ho, who is uh, currently a medical technologist at Changi General Hospital. She helps with the pathologists examining specimens. She came to Singapore from Hong Kong at the age of 14, in the mid-90s. At first, she was a bit scared of Singapore because she had heard that in Singapore, not allowed to drink Coke, not allowed to chew gum. <laughs> it's actually untrue, but that's a rumour. And when she went to her new school, she was one of only a few foreigners, and she was quite worried about fitting in. But then the local students found out that she was from Hong Kong and knew about the Hong Kong film stars and song stars, and so bonded with her because she could share information about these stars with them. When she started working in Changi General Hospital, her supervisor, who is a local Singaporean, guided her, mentored her, and made a very big impact on her life because the supervisor was understanding and supportive. So when her mother fell ill and eventually passed away, she had to take time off and the supervisor accommodated her and, and, and made adjustments. So because of the kindness shown to her by the Singaporeans whom she came across over the years, she decided to take up Singapore citizenship recently. Now she is married to a local-born Singaporean whom she met in JC. And I hope they have many babies soon. <laughs> Immigration is going to be a continuing issue for us. How do we keep the door open while protecting the interests of Singaporeans? How do we welcome citizens while holding on to our values? There are no ideal or permanent solutions to this issue. The measures which I announced tonight will address some of these problems. We'll have to manage, monitor, adjust as we go along. But remember, we ourselves are all descendants of immigrants. Our ancestors came poor, but their descendants worked hard and prospered. Had our ancestors not come here, today's Singapore wouldn't exist. So we have to continue to be open today so that we bring in the right people, manage the difficulties, whatever they may be, so that a generation from now, Singapore will still be thriving and prospering. For all Singaporeans, whether you are local-born or whether you are a new arrival, education is one of our most important priorities. We all want to give our children the best start in life. We already have a very good system of education, which gives our kids a strong foundation, especially in maths and science, and makes them effectively bilingual. And when they leave school or poly or university, they are competent and employable. But we can do better. Every child is different. Every child has his own interests, his own academic inclinations and aptitudes. And our aim should be to provide him with a good education that suits him, one which enables him to achieve his potential and build on his strengths and talents. And talent means talent in many dimensions, not just academic talent, but in art, in music, in sports, in creative activities, in physical activities. And it's a system which must work not just for a few top students, but catering to all our students. Stretch the brilliant ones, but also help those less academically inclined and all those in between. Give each one a tailored and holistic upbringing. So you get academic education, moral education, physical, art, and a sense of belonging and identity. Aim, we aim to build a mountain range with many tall peaks, but with a high base. Not just a single pinnacle where everybody is trying to scramble up one single peak. And we are realizing this vision. All our schools are well equipped with modern facilities, well staffed with good teachers, each one with its own specialties, whether it's the art or the band or uniform groups or sports, so that in any neighborhood school a student can find subjects enrichment programs and CCAs which will excite him, 
opportunities to travel, go overseas on exchange trips or study visits, and a learning environment that will enable him to grow and do his best. Let me show you a few examples of the interesting things which our schools are doing. I've taken them from schools all over Singapore. There are art activities, there are music activities, there are dance activities, there are adventure activities, science, a whole range of things done in many schools all over Singapore. The first one is art. First group is art. These girls are not doing graffiti. They are drawing a wall mural which they have designed, which is quite beautiful. Kids also get a chance to practice batik painting. This boy is obviously very pleased with his creation. And they also do art in other unusual forms. For example, floral displays. This Naval Base Secondary School, they had a floral club. And they participated in the Singapore Garden Festival, which was held recently. They put in an entry. Here you see the girls uh, putting it together. And they won a third prize. In music, we have unusual activities too. This one is the Fusion Orchestra, or called the Nusantara Orchestra at Siglap Secondary School. The teacher responsible travels around Indonesia to find the right instruments to fit into the orchestra. And they've got the angklong here, they've got the gamelan instruments here, which are called bonang and kulintang. And then you have the bells and some Western instruments as well. And all this in Siglap Secondary School. Primary schools start early. This primary school is performing Mulan, adapted from the Disney musical. They can almost go to Broadway. In dance, you see hip hop which I'm told in this school doubles as a PE lesson. Or cross-cultural dance. This group was good, so they went, they, were, they went to Hong Kong Disneyland and performed there. Or traditional Balinese dance. In Bali, Bukit Panjang Government High. This is for students on the IMAS program, the immersion program for Malay language. And they went to Bali and they're learning Balinese dance. The NCC does exciting things. It's not just carrying a rifle around, marching and square bashing. This is not the Singapore Zoo. It's the Rajasthan Desert in India. And they're going camel trekking. And every year we have an expedition because we have an exchange program with the Indian, and Indian cadets. In science, our students do lab work. These girls are doing DNA profiling as part of life sciences. They make robots. This is primary school's children. If you look at the pieces, you will not know what they're trying to do, but it's meant to be a robot which can pick up a ping pong ball, follow a black line, climb obstacles, and then deposit the ping pong ball somewhere and win some kind of robotic championship. And you can see the robot going through its paces. So, these are mostly neighbourhood schools which I've picked from all over Singapore doing good work. But not just doing extracurricular or co-curricular work, they are paying attention to their academic studies too. And one of their principals said to me, I asked him, what can I tell Singaporeans about you and your, and your school? He says, give us a chance to show what we can do for your children. Because not everybody knows that the schools are doing this kind of work. That in every school, you have caring teachers, you have nurturing environment, and you have the chance to do well and be your best. But being Singaporean, we're never satisfied, and we must still do better. What can we do? In the primary schools, I think we should do more to nurture the whole child, develop their physical robustness, enhance their creativity, shape their personal and cultural and social identity so that they are fit, they are confident, they are imaginative, and they know who they are. I am a Singaporean. We will maintain our strengths in maths and science, 
but we need to strengthen soft skills like oral expression, like presentation skills, so that we can raise their language proficiency and confidence. Speak up, so that they can speak up whether it's English or mother tongue, but give a good account of themselves. We need to pay more attention to PE, to art and music, and get teachers who are qualified to teach PE and art and music. So we will continue to improve the teacher-student ratios, train more, recruit more, train more specialists, and make sure that they get a good foundation in primary school. At the end of primary school, there's a big examination called the PSLE. Everybody knows about it. In many cases, the parents take the exam together with the kids. <laughs> I think it's right that the students take exams seriously and the PSLE seriously because it's a basis for how you get admitted into secondary schools. And it's a fair and meritocratic system. But I think we should also see exams in perspective, whether it's the PSLE, whether it's the O levels, whether it's the A levels, an exam is not meant to be a do-or-die test. It will not determine the whole future of your child. If you do well, that's good. If you didn't do quite as well as you expected, there will be opportunities later to do better and to prove yourself again. And in the PSLE, you may or may not get into the particular school which you choose or hanker for. But if you can't get into that one, there will be other good choices for you, and many good choices. So if you do less well in PSLE than you expect, than you hope, there will be opportunities later to catch up, to prove yourself, and to enter competitive programs later on. That's how we design our system. That's what we are going to make happen, and already does exist to some extent. It's not easy to convince parents. I've met parents who come to see me and they particularly want to go to one school. So I said, but I, you know, in Ang Mokyo we have quite a number, so I named them a few which I commend to them. And they look at me and say, please, please write for me. So I will try, but I can't write for all of my residents. And if I could write for all of my residents, MOE couldn't say yes to all of my requests. So I think we have to see it in perspective and we should not put so much pressure on our kids which can be counterproductive. But we can do things to lighten this pressure and to give people more good choices at secondary schools. So we will widen the range of options. The most popular schools, the most popular programs, the most popular programs we can replicate and bring to more schools. So that you don't have to go to school A in order to take program A. You can have program A in many different choices, places. Like the integrated program, the IP. We are going to expand the IP. What is the IP? It's the through train. So students who go into the IP from SEC 1, they go through to JC, and then they take A levels, but they skip the O levels. If you are confident of making it to university, that's a good choice. And we've been doing this for three years now. The results are good. We've got 11 schools doing this. And we're going to expand the IP program to six more schools in Singapore, seven more schools at one. And I hope that will allow more good students to choose this option and get into an IP program. And the way we are going to do it, these new seven schools are going to have dual track. So if you get into the school, you, may not get, you didn't get into the IP program, but you may still get into the school. You have a chance later on. So later on, if you do well in SEC 2, SEC 1 or SEC 2, you can get into the IP program and then proceed from there. So the PSLE doesn't matter quite so much. I think that will give more choices to many Singaporeans. We will also enhance the secondary education for the academically less inclined students. Normal tech students often prefer an ITE approach, the way they are taught in the ITE. So we've tried out to enhance the NT program in several schools. It's worked well.